Thank you, thank you. Good morning to everybody and uh, thank you for uh, attending at this meeting, of course. I would like, first of all, to thank SME Connect uh, for giving me the opportunity to introduce uh, the webinar. Uh, today we are talking about the future of Europe. We are uh, facing major health challenges, uh, such as aging population, uh, such as uh, non-communicable and chronic diseases, uh, pulling pressure on the budgets. We have to work very hard to win these challenges because uh, I, I remember what Angela Merkel said at uh, the members of the European Parliament in 2012. Europe accounts for just over 7% of the global population, produces around 22% of the global GDP, and has to finance more than 50% of global welfare spending. The digitalization of the health sector can contribute to make European models sustainable. COVID-19 pandemic determined a cultural change, overcoming resistances towards new technologies and now these new technologies must be integrated in the healthcare system. Uh, the progress uh, we have made in, uh, in uh, just a few, a few weeks uh, in the attitude of people uh, of uh, using more frequently and uh, extensively uh, the services offered uh, in the cyberspace uh, would uh, have taken uh, years under normal uh, circumstances. Uh, we saw many innovative uh, digital applications uh, for uh, patient care in uh, prevention, uh, in uh, diagnosis, uh, in, and, and the treatment uh, areas. Uh, we saw many digital tools, uh, uh, machine learning and uh, uh, artificial intelligence are more and more uh, used for many different applications. Uh, the hope uh, is uh, that uh, this new family of tools uh, uh, will contribute to the long term sustainability uh, of the healthcare system. Uh, but for the development of digital health, uh, the protection of personal uh, data is crucial. And uh, it is widely shared that uh, coordination amongst the member states. Uh, is fundamental. Otherwise, without uh, a coordination, uh, the national laws uh, adopted by member states uh, to further specify the general data protection re regulation, uh, the GDPR, will result in further fragmentation in uh, major barriers for achieving the required critical mass of data that is necessary uh, to succeed. And SMEC Connect can play a key role also in supporting the coordination we need at EU level. Uh, well, let me finally thank uh, uh, Horst Heitz and uh, his uh, team for having organized uh, uh, the webinar, which is uh, an opportunity for all of us. And now I am really glad to give uh, the word uh, to my former colleague at the European Parliament, Michael Boni. Michael, it's up to Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, Elizabeth, and uh, thank you very much, uh, SME Connect, for organization uh, of this webinar. Uh, and especially, I want to, to uh, emphasize it. Uh, thanks uh, a lot to Elizabeth Gordini for her excellent welcome speech. Uh, we have met in the European Parliament and our cooperation in the EPP group uh, uh, has been very fruitful, uh, as I hope uh, today's meeting will be for all of us. The topic is crucial. Uh, we want to talk about the experience of the pandemic COVID-19 as a so-called game changer. Uh, as uh, Elizabeth said, uh, COVID-19 overcame resistance to the new technologies in many countries, in many social groups, because we can see 
what kind of positive work new technologies could uh, uh, make, uh, could do, and uh, bring to us as patients. Uh, 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 this game changer is important for the improvement of the healthcare, um, better management, effectiveness and efficiency, uh, uh, and uh, I think it's very needed to, to all of us. Uh, also, we can say that uh, uh, deeper understanding of this experience, COVID-19, uh, could speed up all processes of the shift paradigm of the healthcare systems. Uh, today, we need to raise key four problems. Firstly, possibility of the personalization of medical services due to new technologies. Secondly, the need to have clear data sharing model uh, and accessibility of needed data due to GDPR, but uh, without redundant barriers, stopping positive solutions for patients. And this uh, idea of the European health data space is very crucial and important to be implemented in the uh, in coming future. Thirdly, we need to make some e-health solutions much more, as Elizabeth said, harmonized at the European level. Coordination is needed. Uh, uh, we understand that uh, healthcare arises under the competences of member states, but on the other hand, we need to find some common solutions, as for example, European reference network uh, addressed to rare diseases was established in the European Union. Uh, of course, we need to improve interoperability because it's very needed from technical point of view. And the fourth point crucial, uh, 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 we need to consider uh, uh, how we could invest in the long term uh, uh, into in uh, uh, e-health solutions. And I think uh, our partners, our speakers today uh, will present some views on that era. So, Let's move to, to our panelists and to, to our speakers. Uh, uh, we have a great opportunity uh, uh, to have uh, in this discussion future digital health services, uh, excellent speakers, uh, uh, Justin Korwek, uh, Henrik Martins, Daniela Scaramuccia, Lorenzo Montermini, and uh, with the presentation of the uh, uh, case Fabrizio Prior. We will start with uh, uh, Justine Korwek. She is a vice chair of Digital Health Committee, Met Tech Europe, and director of uh, Government Affairs Europe, ResMed. Met Tech uh, is the European Trade Association for the medical technology uh, industry, including diagnostics, uh, medical devices, and digital health. Uh, members include European and multinational companies as well as national Medi medical Me technology associations. Uh, uh, Justine is also uh, uh, the vice chair of this digital health committee. This committee advocates for the advancement and uh, adoption of uh, digital health in the EU for the benefits of patients uh, and healthcare systems. And ResMed delivers digital health technologies and cloud-connected medical devices uh, uh, which transform care for, for the people with many, many diseases. So, Justin, uh, uh, the floor is yours, uh, please. Thank you, Dr. Boni, and thank you, uh, Mrs. Gardini. I'm happy to be here, and I agree with many of the points you raised in your introduction. And I'm here to share the uh, viewpoint of the industry on behalf of MedTech Europe. So, my hat today is to represent the industry as a whole in Europe rather than ResMed itself, but um, I will um, move over to my slides now if I can get them working. So um, here on behalf of Metric Europe, and it's a, like as Dr. Boni mentioned, it's, a, it's the trade association for the Metric um, industry, and it's an organization of 130 multinational corporations and also uh, 50 plus medical technology associations. But if we're talking about SMEs, as, as is our audience today, um, a lot of, a majority actually of medtech industry in Europe are SMEs. So it's really good to, um, to be in your company today to talk about uh, how we are moving forward on e-health solutions. 
Um, the Digital Health Committee has been growing since its inception in 2018. Um, it has now half of the membership of MedTech Europe, so it shows exactly the importance of how the industry is transforming toward the advocacy and adoption of digital health in the EU. And as a representative of ResMed, where we specialize in digital health technologies and solutions that uh, basically provide um, cloud-connected devices to treat sleep apnea and COPD and chronic diseases. Um, I'm happy to be the vice chair of this committee and represent um, our viewpoint in terms of how we can help uh, move um, the industry toward the digital transformation. Um, so a little bit of background, as everybody already knows, um, the digital health technologies are an important growth area currently, and we've been kind of shifting the paradigm internally as an industry, but we have been uh, very active in advocating for its adoption across Europe because of these challenges that are able to, um, to be addressed through this technology. As Dr. Boni already mentioned, um, you know, it, it can help with the growing shortages in the healthcare workforce and addressing aging populations and uh, addressing chronic conditions, and then also the recent pandemic, uh, which will really push the transformation forward um, as we move towards the post-COVID um, uh, period. So some of the examples of digital health solutions are artificial intelligence, big data, telemedicine, and remote monitoring. Um, at the heart of this is the importance of health data. So MedTech as an industry has increasingly become digital and also generate, generated information and data that are crucial for the prevention, diagnosis, treatment, monitoring, and management of health and, um, and lifestyles, whereas empowering patients. Um, and at the, at the heart of the new technologies is the data that is essential to, um, to develop life-saving innovation. So it's used in uh, clinical trials and scientific research. Um, it also makes healthcare delivery safer and better by reducing error and um, providing better access to information. Uh, it makes healthcare delivery more efficient through telemedicine, remote monitoring, and also improving the quality of life. So moving, enabling the, the movement of patients to the home through digital solutions and also being able to share data across the different uh, healthcare providers in the, um, in the patient uh, pathway. So um, a lot of those solutions are actually done through uh, AI technology. So we're actually just at the beginning of developing those solutions. But I wanted to kind of lay out some of the, the examples of where AI um, is actually very useful in healthcare. So, uh, here you have um, the example of, you know, providing access to health services and a shortage of healthcare professionals uh, can be addressed by using algorithms to perform time-consuming tasks. So we compute a lot of those uh, routine uh, tasks that, um, that healthcare pro professionals are involved with. We can also gain greater efficiencies and optimization in healthcare delivery. Um, we can provide with faster data analysis and address a uh, burden of lifestyle for non-communicable diseases uh, through patient empowerment, coaching, remote monitoring, and support of self-management. Um, and also if we, you know, use the data and the quality of data in the right uh, format, we can also very easily address disease outbreaks through prevention and tracing as it has been a really big topic of conversation um, during this crisis. So here we have um, a number of um, digital health technologies that have been kind of proliferating since the COVID crisis has hit. Um, there's a lot of discussion about screening tools where, pe where people, citizens and patients are able to self-diagnose and you know, stay at home, but also make a decision on whether to seek medical care. And that medical care is now mostly being provided through teleconsultations or video conferences because people are encouraged to stay at home. 
And the most uh, important kind of aspect of where we do at ResMed is provide remote monitoring. So our devices are cloud connected and we are able to send data to a secure platform and enable um, healthcare providers to basically track patients uh, uh, as they as they improve or um, get worse on their uh, therapy. So <clears throat> this is going to be, I think, the way that we move forward. I think the remote monitoring will be increasingly facilitated, and we've already seen that teleconsultations are being embraced uh, over the past few weeks of the crisis. Um, the other thing is uh, is a very, I guess, controversial or a very important. Development is the um, is the kind of spread of uh, tracing apps um, to make sure that you know when we come in contact with somebody with COVID that we can actually prevent the the further spread of that. So I know there's a lot of uh, a lot of member states or nations have now uh, embarked on some of those kind of solutions. Um, so. You know, the realization here is that the data that the medtech industry um, gathers through its technologies and the transformation for digital actually can save lives. Um, and we do so through very diligent means. And I know that there's a lot of concern in terms of how the medtech industry can protect uh, the privacy um, of the citizens and the patients that are being uh, treated with these technologies. So um, what I wanted to also kind of reiterate is that, you know, the medtech industry has have always been very strictly involved with using the data, but also protecting the data. So in terms of providing our solutions, we are required to um, engage in pre and post market clinical investigations, which require the collection of processing of sensitive data. So Without this, we're not able to provide those solutions. So we take this uh, very seriously and, and, and um, we protect whatever sensitive data that we have to use to provide those uh, solutions. Additionally, um, we process health data on behalf of healthcare organizations and we make sure that whatever uh, use of that data goes beyond you know, um, the compliance that we we get permission for that as well and we are always compliant to privacy regulations and uh, we want to make sure that our patients and healthcare providers trust us so we 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 basically develop technologies at the design stage with privacy in mind so this is always um ensured as as um as we try and provide solutions as well um so also when we embark on, by, on secondary use of data, which is now, you know, kind of touching upon the GDPR, um, we want to make sure that we follow the right guidelines that are provided in the GDPR, but also um, improve patient outcomes and increase efficiency and sustainability of the healthcare system. So, so while we try to accomplish these efficiencies, we make sure that privacy is respected and the GDPR is complied to, so, because that's basically in the interest of, of, our, of our business, but also in, in, in terms of helping our patients and healthcare providers um, in the long run. Um, there are a number of kind of issues which have already been discussed in terms of where the limitations at the moment that need to be addressed and uh, of course reimbursement at the national level is one of the main components for industry to basically embark and for patients to to adopt because um, if we don't have digital solutions being reimbursed by national uh, you know healthcare systems then it's very difficult for for the scaling and adoption of those um, of those solutions, so we're really pushing toward you know uh, increasing um, awareness and also adoption of digital health solution reimbursement, and it's also an incentive um, for for spreading these technologies across um, Europe. Also, in terms of access and quality of data, you know some of the data that's uh, being collected by hospitals, you know, remains in hospitals; it's stuck in silos. Across member states, there are different standards that are being used. So we really sometimes have trouble 
accessing that data because of those silos, because of those differing uh, standards, and then also in terms of the quality of data, uh, it becomes a very complex um, way of of, uh, of basically treading through through that data to be able to develop um, meaningful applications. Um, legal and regulatory barriers, the GDPR, as much as it provides, you know, and ensures the privacy of patients and citizens, there's also a um, still a kind of um, different way that member states are adopting and implementing this. So we need increasing harmonization across member states and legal certainty to make sure that we can um, move the data across borders across Europe and make the best of it. Um, and then also skills and trust. So we need the uh, the healthcare workforce to be able to um, use the new applications that come with all the new data that's being collected and, and have the digital literacy to be effective. Um, and then also, um, I think with the trust element, it's mostly about educating the, the population about the, all the opportunities that we can um, we can, you know, uh, embark on and and have as as the digital transformation is taking place. So finally, um, digital health tools will be a critical element in building resilience for future pandemics, and it's essential for stakeholders in the healthcare arena to drive this change together. So it's uh, business, it's politicians, it's um, you know the patients and the doctors and scientific groups. And at the moment, Matic Europe is working very hard to, um, to, to, you know, to respond to some of the new European Union um, proposals on the European data strategy, as well as the European health data space. So we've been very active in engaging with uh, not only the European Commission, but also various stakeholders to make sure that we have a consistent and coordinated um, message in terms of how we can, you know, drive the digit of healthcare. Uh, and since I'm uh, here on behalf of uh, MedTech Europe, if you have any questions, feel free to um, contact Michael Strubin, who's actually the director of digital health at MedTech Europe, and uh, he basically manages all the vice chairs in, in that committee and knows all the um, relevant background in case you'd like to follow up. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Justin. Uh, I think that it was very, very inspiring, touching many aspects of the problem. On the one hand, uh, focused on uh, uh, making uh, uh, this uh, shift paradigm using new technologies, but you have also indicated many problems and barriers and how to overcome them. And uh, proper using of the data due to uh, rules uh, 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 which are important for the GDPR, but on the other hand, which uh, could uh, 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 use and uh, secondary use uh, uh, health care, health data uh, for improving uh, uh, diagnosis and, uh, uh, and treatment and, uh, and therapies. I think it's crucial and we need to continue this discussion and this, uh, as, you have as, as you have mentioned, uh, this uh, debate on data strategy and uh, the work how to establish this European health data space, I think would be the good uh, way, the good channel for further discussion. Thank you very much again. Now we are moving to uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Enric, uh, Enric Martin, Martins, Mar Martins, I, I hope that I'm spelling properly. Uh, he's a medical doctor and university professor at the medical school and two business schools teaching and researching uh, in digital health, leadership and management. Uh, he is the past president of SPMS uh, Portugal's digital health agency, uh, where he led national e-health network and the former member states co-chair of the EU e-health network, the highest policy body on e-health in the union. It is, I think, very important. Now he's working as an, uh, as an academic and uh, 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 individual consultant. Uh, uh, Enric, uh, the floor is yours, please. Um, thank you very much for the, for the invitation to, to share some thoughts on, the, on this topic. 
Um, as, as presented, I have I've come from an experience mostly at the national level uh, for, for the past uh, nine years. Um, and, and of course, also a landscape in, in European debates on these matters. Uh, I think uh, emergencies need to be prepared in advance. Uh, of course, uh, we are all trying our best to, to do what we can for the crisis, uh, but the reality is public health uh, information systems uh, should be developed uh, before the crisis, ideally, uh, in order for them to be very well managed. Um, and what are the big differences? And perhaps that's why uh, some countries struggle in having good uh, public health information systems. First of all, public health information systems are population-based, where most electronic health records and e-health systems are person-centered. So for long years, for example, we have talked about um, uh, patient summaries exchange in Europe, um, but we never talk about having a profile of patients and having a population-based approach uh, to, to that. Um, the second has already been touched briefly uh, regarding uh, ge geographical positioning. For public health uh, work, knowing where people are is very important. It is key. However, most electronic health records, um, they, they were thought as agnostic of location. So, for example, they were born in most, mostly in hospital settings, and the concept was that people were in the hospital. Uh, where exactly in the hospital they were located was obviously found because you would know the bed and you would know the ward. But this is not true when people are moving around, living in more than one house, uh, going off to work in another city every day. Um, third level of, of difference that public health information systems may not even identify each individual. Many systems, like vaccination coverage systems, they, they have been created to know about the cohort. Uh, is, is, is there all the kids uh, been vaccinated? Uh, it doesn't really matter if this specific kid has been vaccinated or not, because the idea was to get overall uh, averages, and, and, and overall views. And then still many are paper-based processes. Uh, this is due to heavy law and regulation on public health. Things like, for example, the electronic death certification, uh, Portugal one, was one of the first and perhaps one of the few countries to have uh, uh, electronic death certification. And it took us uh, almost as much time rewriting the law and regulations as it took us to build the IT system. Uh, so we need faster healthcare digitalization. Uh, this has already been mentioned. And we need to talk about what I call digital healthcare system. I've been writing about this topic. And of course, today we don't have time, but, but I have a, a paper coming out on this with more detail. Um, I mean, basically, what are the basis of this new way of thinking about healthcare? Is that we need to think healthcare as digital first, and not as digital enabled. For a long time, we are thinking and we're always saying that IT will improve healthcare. Uh, we have to think that IT is basis of healthcare. Uh, so digital patients are the basis of healthcare, not that we will try to empower digital patients. A sort of a surplus, an extra. Uh, it's no longer an extra. And if COVID showed us something, was that digital patients, I know there's not research yet published, but I, I feel, uh, I have that sense that digital patients, digital enabled patients have done better. They have been more capable to renew their prescription in countries where that system was available. They were more capable to talk to their families to not feel so isolated. They were more capable to carry on taking their medicines. So this, this is the beginning of a new society of digital patients. And I think we should explore that. And of course, security of data, privacy, and interoperability are key uh, to trust. Uh, there is no trust in the system if these three, three things are not worked together, and not against each other. I hear sometimes debates that interoperability will reduce cybersecurity. Often that privacy um, needs to be lowered because we want now to integrate all the systems and we have to 
or a forget GDPR. Actually, uh, we don't. We can build good systems, federated models, uh, somehow uh, more difficult, more complex architectures are needed, uh, but they would possibly be better uh, for the long run. Uh, now, very quickly, uh, what are the bases of precision public health uh, uh, systems? And this seems so obvious, but if you go around Europe, in my experience as the, the co-chair, co the Health Network has two co-chairs, the European Commission co-chair and a member state co-chair. In that role, I found that most countries do not have these three pillars completely stabilized, patient, professional, and healthcare providers registry. Why is this three pillars critical? Because you need to know who was taking care of who and where. Where did this encounter take place? Be it digital or uh, be it face to face. And then just sharing our Portuguese experience, these were projects that we launched during my presidency for seven years as a digital health agency. Um, National Health Birth Certification and Notification. In Portugal, if you are born today, you will not leave the maternity without electronic identity and your GP office will have received electronic notice that you have been born. National death certification, geolocation, mobile version and desktop version, which means that you can register death certifications and also geolocate this phenomenon, which is very important for other types of epidemiological problems. And then national epidemiological surveillance system. Um, we have all our laboratory uh, systems, public and private, connected to this system, and also clinicians can trigger an alert. Uh, so if something comes out as a lab positive, positive result, and if it's under the 63 diseases that are compulsory for notification, we have just added, of course, COVID, then the system will trigger a sequence of questions and, of course, activate public health response. And then central vaccination registration and what I call vaccination record online and on phone, as we have offered to the Portuguese. What are the challenges in Europe? We need to link up patient registries. Uh, we cannot live without knowing that this number in Italy is the same number of person, but they, he just went and lived in Brussels. So we need to start linking up these identification systems linking up national notification systems to the European Central Disease Control. Today, most countries report by Excel files. This is an asynchronous, normally once a month up to date. Uh, it's not granular reporting, it's not real time. So the ECDC can never have a picture of what's happening um, at a sort of a micro level. And this is what we need. Uh, and then of course the EU uh, vaccination card passport whatever you want to call it. This is just a, a generalization of a patient summary guideline. We have already adopted these. We just need now to implement them in all countries. And to conclude, uh, just a, a word of notice to SMEs. I think this document is a very good reflection. It just was published on the 12th of May. This is the last uh, uh, output of the Yelp network. Um, it's looking at the challenges of mobile applications to support like tracing. It of course discusses uh, you know, a, more, a more centralized versus a more distributed uh, um, architectures uh, and it tries to, to send the message that you know, uh, GDPR and security are not incompatible uh, with uh, contact tracing um, and that contract tracing should, should go ahead uh, but perhaps taking into account certain elements. This was a very intense work. Uh, I'm proud to have laid the foundations for this work. I was not part of it yet, um, but, but the network is now very agile. It used to be meeting twice a year. Uh, this has built the confidence of all countries participating and uh, DG Sante and DG Connect more actively involved. But it is now due to the crisis meeting twice a week in Tikran. Uh, and it has helped to do this uh, um, So uh, thank you very much for, for your attention. I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, and you're also welcome to know more about what I'm thinking and writing, <coughs> both on my email and my uh, website. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much for, for this presentation. And also I think uh, it is important that you have shared, you, you have shared uh, your experience uh, those seven years. So it uh, shows uh, uh, how advanced Portugal is in many areas that uh, when we are talking about uh, digital health. And I think it's also important to understand that we, when we are talking about using new technologies uh, in the healthcare area, we need to uh, redefine the concept of patient, as you have said, yes. Uh, uh, so this is uh, the idea of digital uh, patient uh, uh, concept because it, it uh, probably would be completely different, yes. Uh, uh, and we need to describe the, uh, uh, the area, we need to describe the model. And also, I agree with you that uh, we need to focus on, uh, on uh, 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 making something at the national level and uh, special efforts are, are needed at the European level, those links and uh, much more knowledge uh, uh, for all of us. Thanks, uh, thanks uh, a lot. We will come back to some questions, I hope. And now we are moving uh, uh, to Daniela Skaramuccia. Uh, uh, she leads the IBM Digital Business Development Team. Uh, this unit is focused uh, on supporting companies from all sectors and institutions in the large uh, innovation and digital transformation projects, leveraging on the deep and breadth IBM portfolio solutions, resources, and competencies, from consultancy to new uh, te technologies. Uh, Daniela has strong experience in the healthcare and life sciences industries achieved by uh, serving healthcare providers and peers as strategic consultant, but directly also as a, acting as a Minister of Health for Tuscany region, uh, of course, Tuscany in Italy. So, uh, Daniela, the floor is yours, please. I need to be, okay, I'm on mute. Thank you, thank you, Michael, thank you, Elisabetta, <clears throat> for the introduction. It's a pleasure to be here with you and listen to this interesting conversation. Let me share my screen. Let me share the screen. Okay. Okay. So um, I, I agree, by the way, with most of what was, is already said. And in my speech today, I wanted to share with you three considerations. First of all, uh, as, uh, as you already said, a paradigm shift is ongoing. Uh, as Enrique mentioned, I mean, I like Enrique the way you mentioned it, IT is not only support, uh, has been the basis of the healthcare in nowadays, and it's becoming every day more the basis of the healthcare provision. Second, this paradigm shift cannot happen in a few weeks. It needs to be supported by investment in technologies, skills, and processes and organization. But third, I do strongly believe that Europe, European country, with a common base of shared value in the way healthcare and security is provided can really pave the way for a new uh, worldwide healthcare digital model. So going to my first point, I mean, I don't want to waste the time of everybody, as we already said, given the necessity uh, the requirement of social distance during the COVID uh, quarantine, the only way to, pre to provide and care assistance was due to technology. So we have seen really an increase of uh, um, medical visit by physical to digital. And this was really fundamental new. But also, uh, and this may be something that uh, is less is less public. We have uh, we have now the necessity to quickly discover new therapy, new drugs to really accelerate the drug discovery. And in this phase, again, IT uh, is the basis, as Enrique said. So uh, computational power and artificial intelligence can really make the difference in accelerating. Uh, uh, the drug discovery, the vaccine, the trials, and so forth. This is an example uh, as IBM in the US, we partnered with the White House and Department of Energy to create the COVID-19 High Performance Computing Consortium. 
by the way, this is a public-private consortium made up of companies that usually were competing with each other, but joined forces together with the, with the public and private research center to put in together the, the, the more powerful computer to uh, allow free access to researcher to, for computational capacity together with artificial intelligence. Something like that happened, by the way, in Europe, in Europe too, of uh, the Monte Pharmaceutical uh, lead a pub public private consortium um, leveraging on the capability of uh, Barcelona Computational Center, uh, Chineca Computational Center, and Rutter Computational Center. So, this is another way where really uh, the digital technology, together with artificial intelligence, can be of tremendous support uh, to uh, provide us with accelerating research and provide us with new treatment and potential cure. But if I go to my second point, I mean, this, uh, this, is, this is a paradigm sheet, I have to say. This change is going to stay uh, also because COVID is going to stay. I mean, we haven't defeated COVID yet. Uh, and so, I mean, to, to make sure that really everybody can benefit of it, can get the most out of it, we need to make sure that the right technologies are in place, technologies are in place with the proper protection, security. Uh, we need to make sure that processes uh, are in place. I mean, now we all talk about telehealth, but uh, what we mean with telehealth? Uh, what are the standards? Uh, what we need to define all the process, what are the involvement um, and also skills. We definitely need skills, everybody. Most likely it will be different uh, skills, not only, I mean, to use the digital tool, but really understand how the digital work and most likely there will be a change in the perfection of doorstop, nurses, caregiver, and by the way, all patient too, right? So we really need, I mean, we cannot just say, okay, now that uh, we had COVID, the, the paradigm shift happened. No, we need to support it, invest in it, drive it, and require that processes, skills, and technologies are, are in place. But uh, if I go to my third point, I mean, as European, we all of us give it for granted, right? But in reality, we, uh, we have the opportunity to live in a continent where all the countries share a common value of healthcare services. As stated from the Minister of Health Council in 2006, uh, uh, the, the, the European countries share healthcare systems that are universal, provide access to good quality of care, provide equity and solidarity, which is something unique in the world in the way that has been constructed. And, and we have a richness of research center, skills, clinical, hospital competencies. And every day, as 741 million citizens, we generate clinical data. And we have in place one of, for sure, most advanced GDPR uh, policy. If we put all of this together and really work on together creating uh, an L data platform, accessible, secure, open, we could really, uh, let me say, pave the way for, for a new digital health system based on real world data that can improve the research of our research center and really build a new and better healthcare for the, for, the whole, uh, for the whole world. I do really think that Europea, with, with this long lasting tradition of uh, providing protection and care to all citizens, is the best position to pave their way for a new healthcare digital model. And I finish. Thank you. Thank you very much, Daniela. Uh, uh, I think uh, it is important to understand how IBM is involved in many activities all over the world. Yes, in, also in my country, I'm from Poland. 
uh, you have touched many crucial issues, but also you have raised the problem of reimbursement because we are talking about new technologies, telemedicine, using artificial intelligence, but problem of reimbursement, when we will start with this new uh, uh, healthcare model, uh, which paradigm uh, uh, will, will increase, yes, and we need to find some solutions. And also thanks a lot for, for touching the, 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 the problem of ethical issues, because uh, uh, this is a big discussion in Europe, when we are discussing on, on artificial intelligence, intelligence strategy, uh, it, it's important, especially when we want to build the new relations between the healthcare area, the doctors, the physicians, and patients based on trust. Yes, so uh, uh, all partners uh, uh, should be transparent, and uh, uh, all solutions should be based on ethical principles. Uh, thank you again. I, I think that uh, we will have time for some questions and explanations in, in, in the last part of uh, our uh, conference, of our meeting. Uh, and now uh, I, I want to move to uh, Lorenzo Montermini. Uh, Lorenzo is, the direct, is the Director for Strategies, Communication and Marketing Office in uh, GPI Group. Uh, uh, when I have looked at uh, the mission of this company, it was clear that uh, there are three key uh, words, passion, synergy, and solidity. Uh, GPI Group is the preferred partner in uh, Italy uh, for technologies and uh, services dedicated to uh, healthcare and social services listed on uh, Borsa Italiana and MTA. Uh, having uh, uh, many offices in Italy and seven offices all over the world. So I think it's a very important strategic partner uh, uh, for those uh, uh, systems who need this kind of partnership. Uh, uh, please, Lorenzo, the floor is yours. Oh, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> oh. First of all, I would like to, to thank ASME Connect for, for this kind of invitation. It's a great pleasure to being here uh, for this very interesting uh, webinar. Uh, before focusing on uh, webinar main topics, uh, let me give you a, a very short presentation of the company. Next. Uh, GP is uh, a leading company in the sector of digital technologies and services for the healthcare market uh, in Italy and worldwide. 2019 reported over 240 million euros turnover over more than 5,000 employees working in over 50 branches in Italy with a significant international footprint. We are a reference player in the field of software solutions for public and private healthcare delivery organization and also the leading Italian operator in healthcare contact center services with half of the citizens served. We also deal with advanced pharmaceutical logistics. We produce and sell automated cabinets for, for drugs, ICT and payment services. And since 2018, we are listed on, on the MTA capital market. Next. Uh, for over two months, uh, we have been on uh, the front line alongside our customers with our services and with our solutions to face the COVID-19 crisis, which, uh, uh, as you know, in Italy, as in the rest of the world, has put a strain on the, on the stability of the national health, health, health systems. But our system, our Italian system, has held up. It has held up thanks to, let me say, the extraordinary contribution of the all Italian healthcare staff and the all Italian ability, I say it with a real pride, to, to face uh, unexpected adversities with the determination, with the sacrifice, creativity, and also flexibility. The effect of this pandemic, uh, not only on the economic system, but also on the health status of the Italian population can only be perceived in the medium to long term. Uh, in this evaluation, we cannot forget the heavy contribution in terms of human lives, uh, especially among the elderly population. In, uh, in this lockdown uh, period, uh, non-COVID uh, healthcare activities, with the exception of the emergency one, have been put on, uh, on standby, with many patients who had to postpone uh, their examination, their visit, their uh, uh, care pathways, 
and with consequences that we only realize uh, in the next future. Next. Uh, let me draw parallels. Analysts say that uh, the number of we consumers in Italy has increased by 2 million during the lockdown period. The, the e-commerce giants uh, Amazon and Alibaba reported uh, bold outcomes in their turnover during the first quarter. While in the meantime, uh, most uh, non-COVID healthcare services have been stopped all around uh, Italy. Uh, we have seen it from our special point of view of the contact centers where the number of bookings for visits and examinations has dramatically dropped down. So in the retail market of goods, uh, Italian citizens really had an, an effective uh, workaround to, to lock down by e-commerce, but no alternative ways to get as care services have been provided instead. And I think we have to reflect on it. What could this period have been like if we had really had a truly digital healthcare system? Uh, in the last weeks in Italy and in many other European countries, there have been exponentially growing expression of interest in uh, telemonitoring solutions, telemedicine, virtual care platforms to face the pandemic crisis. All of this is suddenly overcoming the uh, financial, administrative, uh, legislative, and also privacy barrier that have uh, blocked the spread till now, a clear demonstration of the fact, in my opinion, that these were more than factual cultural barriers. Uh, this mainstream is a very positive news, but that's not enough, uh, in my opinion. And next. Uh, the COVID-19 health emergency is leading to a widespread awareness of the role of uh, digital technologies to provide the answer to new care issues, in, in particular in the management of chronic diseases. In Italy, over 38% of citizens have one or more chronic diseases, absorbing more than 75% of uh, uh, total uh, economic health care resources. With COVID-19, uh, it is as if nature had made us understand in a concrete way the urgency of important choices to keep on granting universal access to, to care, assuring quality of, of life. But from my point of view, what I frequently feel, however, is a, a distorted awareness about what digital transformation in, uh, in healthcare is. Uh, it doesn't deal with the pure application of uh, uh, modern digital technologies to, to care processes. You know, every day a new amazing, a new groundbreaking health, health care app comes out, but with a deep redesign uh, of prevention, diagnostic and care models by means of digital technologies. New models of care, new service model for the care in which the role of the public and the private health care delivery organization will be uh, redefined. The models in which uh, IoT, big data, and artificial uh, intelligence technologies will allow to automate uh, low value added activities and extend the natural cognitive limitation of healthcare staff, ensuring economic, financial, and uh, uh, economic and financial sustainability and, and quality of care. This is our vision that as GP we have condemned in the claim your healthcare partner for a healthy future and that we are. Uh, already applying concretely has in the case of the, the telemedicine project in uh, regional Lombardia, perhaps the, the most important telemed uh, project ever started in, in Italy. Uh, if we refer to the, uh, the Italian context and the current newspaper debate, perhaps you have read uh, something about it regarding different regional outcomes in, in facing the pandemic. We can probably share that some regions more than others have been able to better deal with the crisis overall with a, a lower tribute to human lives and uh, with a less impact on the population. But where do these different outcomes come from, uh, from ICT investments? No, uh, many Italian regions have made a huge investment in electronic health over the years, but some of them have made a different uh, choices from the point of view of, of innovation of prevention and care model strengthening, as in, as in the case of Regione Veneto, the role of a primary medicine network, reallocating resources, reconverting local hospitals, and so, and this thanks to ICT technologies. Uh, they started a path that is still very long, but uh, has already shown its potential in, uh, in this emergency. This, in our opinion, is the way forward. So when we talk about uh, e-health, uh, let me say that 
digital technologies are not the answer. They are an enabling factor to achieve new care models where the patient really is at the center this time. Digital transformation of healthcare is a medium long-term program that requires a specific and huge investments and requires also overcoming the traditional information barrier existing among regional and national health systems. The COVID-19, as it often been said, doesn't stop us at the boundaries. And our hope is that the next legislative and economic act related to the, the so-called post-COVID restart will uh, take this issue we are talking about into a serious account. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for, for the presentation and uh, uh, sharing with us uh, uh, some uh, your thoughts. I think uh, uh, it is also important, as you have mentioned uh, uh, at the end of your presentation, uh, the digital health is uh, not the objective per se. This is a tool for something, yes, uh, uh, to improve uh, healthcare systems, uh, uh, to uh, uh, support uh, diagnosis, to make much more effective therapies, uh, to be oriented on patients. I think it's important because uh, in this situation, we, uh, I think, will be able uh, uh, to understand deeper uh, uh, the ecosystem, as you have indicated, uh, uh, this is not only um, uh, smart machines, uh, there are service providers, uh, there are some collaborators, there are reg regulators, suppliers, and of course, the new relation between patients and, and, uh, and physicians. So uh, uh, thank you very much for inspiring uh, presentation. And now we are moving uh, uh, to the case presentation. Uh, and I would ask uh, Fabrizio Prior, the president of Innovare. Innovare is a company uh, specialized on the development uh, and introduction of new technologies, vertical applications, products and services uh, in various sectors like uh, aerospace, auto, uh, uh, automotive, ICT, digital health and other. Innovare uh, collaborates with many large uh, worldwide industrial groups universities and uh, research centers. In the digital health sector, Innovare develops solutions for the vision and uh, remote control of patients at home, which is important for the monitoring and for the prevention. And after that, uh, also it's also important for the, uh, uh, this part of, uh, of reconvalescence. Uh, and also, uh, is focused on body scan and augmented vision system for dental and uh, or surgery applications. So uh, also thank you very much, uh, Elizabeth, because I, I hope that uh, 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 those uh, uh, great Italian companies invited to, to, this, uh, to this webinar uh, was uh, uh, your idea. And uh, I think it's very important to, to show how uh, it is advanced in, in Italy and of course in, in Portugal. Uh, 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 so Fabrizio, the floor is yours. Let's start. Good morning again to everybody and thanks to the organizer for the invitation to present uh, our case study. I present uh, Canana Mico, that is a technology uh, logical system realized by Innovare SRL to support the implementation of uh, CrossCare, an interreg European project. This has been uh, closed in uh, 2019, at the end of last year. We release an integrated ACT system for home user for audio video connection with public or private health structures. You can go to the next one. So CrossCut project has been financed by Interreg European Measure and support directly by uh, Veneto and Friuli Venezia Giulia regions uh, for Italy and from Slovenia country. The beneficiary of the project were national, regional, and local public authorities and social health care professionals, and especially the elderly, who were able to obtain a personal innovative type of care aimed at improving the quality of life and increasing the degree of social inclusions. The innovative approach of the use of e-health technologies integrated and personalized with an innovative care model for the elderly, demonstrating the possibility to overcome 
current practice of standardized service with a new paradigm of collaboration and the community involvement to delay unionization as much as possible with the nursing homes. Uh, cross care was re um, mainly um, uh, related to uh, Alzheimer's uh, disease, okay, in the early stage for patients that are living at home alone. You can go to the next uh, uh, slide. And CrossCare has uh, demonstrated that using a Canal Amico system has been uh, possible to provide audio video connection between uh, healthcare managers and patients or in general users at their home. It's, uh, you will see in the next uh, slide, but it will be very different from the experience that uh, we are uh, doing right now or that you are uh, usually um, uh, using a Skype or other type of uh, uh, communication systems. The care manager were able to manage their patients affected by Alzheimer's disease in the initial stage at home. All these people were over 70 years old and living alone. For this factor, the communication were realized using the TV, okay, with the uh, high definition full screen quality and the real time synchronizations. With these patients, uh, uh, no, one, uh, no one frame can be lost in order to maintain the direct contact. Tivu is the only household appliance that the patient remember how to use and that they use every day. The experience and the good care result in terms of patient health improvement and personal satisfaction has demonstrated the full functionality of the system also during a stress test. You can go to the next. The system is designed to connect a care manager with one to up to 10 patients at the same time in real time, the domiciliated uh, in their own homes in order to carry out common treatment and entertainment session, session or simply perform uh, patient's interview and visually check uh, with uh, their health status. All connected the patients will uh, see their care manager will, uh, while the operator can select the people to view simultaneously on the screen and manage audio and microphone uh, of the patients. The care manager can act uh, on each single patient using live connections and text message or play remote video independent for each patient or all together. You can go to the next. How the system works? The system consists of a control station for the operator, simply a PC, so easily to use uh, and, and uh, to be found in uh, every uh, health structure. And equipped with uh, a high definition webcam and uh, uh, with the broadcast unit equipment, okay? Uh, with uh, an, uh, also with uh, an, uh, an high definition webcam for the patients. This uh, is a, a unit that is connected directly to the home TV, okay? It's not necessary a, a, a smart TV, directly connected with the HDMI uh, connection. It's very simple to to install it and the user have nothing to do, only to power up the system. So it can be easily installed by the patient itself or maybe by a, a service uh, people. Uh, when the patient select uh, the channel, okay, it select the channel simply with the pressing a, a button of, uh, of, um, of their um, TV, um, I don't know, the, the, the TV, um, um, I don't remember the <laughs> English word, okay, about the TV driver, okay, and uh, uh, they wait, uh, they will wait for the connection uh, with the care manager. When the, finally the doctor enabled the section, the camera will be activated and the patient will have immediate evidence of, of, of this uh, since the content reproducing TV will be updated with the director vision from his workstation and they can start the communication. So the visualization is exactly the same with a quality TV, okay? There is no any, any change. So if uh, anybody knows uh, the, the quality TV is a very strong uh, um, quality signal, okay? From resolution point of view and, uh, and, and this will be realized. You can go to the next. And uh, during the project time frame, uh, uh, has been realized a testing trial with two groups of 10 people. 
and uh, each group has been managed by a care manager to supply real-time assistance. And this has been activated in two structures, one in Friuli Venezia Giulia at Sacile Hospital, and the second one has been located in the Veneto region at Francesco and Francesco on uh, healthcare residence. Okay, uh, the people home were located in the region, and uh, uh, the two care managers were supported remotely the patients with main activity as. Uh, uh, visit a simple interview on the people's status, psychological visual control, socialization with a care manager between uh, connected patients and with the health structure during special events, uh, gymnastic and physical education, uh, support, emergency aid, and family and caregiver support when uh, necessary. You can go to the next, you can see on the screen uh, uh, something that uh, is a visualizer on, uh, this is the visualization of the care manager. Okay, you can go to the next. We already start to improve this, uh, uh, this system to be integrated in a platform in, in order to name it Health at Home, in order to uh, made up a various device capable of enhancing the remote monitoring activities. The system can automatically record the vital and environment parameters, emergency call and the video connection. The Health and Home platform we call uh, in this way could be used in many fields of public or private health, supporting new care methodology with less cost and better reaction time, with the possibility to coordinating many health actors, and it can be implemented for senior citizen assistance, monitoring at home, elderly system monitoring nursing home, patient care monitoring at home, integrated home care, uh, monitoring protected residents, assistance and uh, monitoring patients with cognitive or neuromuscular uh, degenerative disease. The same, it could be replicated also in hospital ward because it is exactly the same. It can be replicated there and the uh, assisting or uh, monitoring for uh, first aid patients. You can go to the next. And uh, uh, this is a, uh, because uh, pre-COVID-19 health situation already requires a change of paradigm, as many factors of the healthcare system indicate the need of practice change. So increases their cost, population aging, increasing uh, uh, chronic and long-term illness uh, disease. COVID-19 emergency show clearly to every in the world that is necessary to permit uh, connected health. The need to supply remote care in house from hospital, family doctor, it was a demand in this period due to the quarantine practice. But in the future, it will be a demand for economics purpose to decrease the timing and rise the level of the care. Okay, I go very fast, but uh, it was necessary for the timing <laughs> constraint. Thank you to everybody. You can go to the next level. Thank you very much, uh, Fabrizio. I think it was, it was excellent because uh, in many debates on the future of healthcare era, uh, uh, the idea of uh, moving from the model of hospital to home hospital is coming back. It means that uh, many, the, the, the big part of some services important for patients will be, will be uh, 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 implemented uh, uh, not in the hospital, uh, but uh, at home. So it is very important for the privacy, this is very important for the feeling of, uh, of, of being at home, which is important for the, uh, 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 for the uh, 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 good move uh, and good mood for, for, for the people. So thank you again. We have uh, 15 minutes to the end and I want to, to ask you, and uh, um, um, uh, now I think uh, I present some questions addressed uh, to you individually, to, to, to all of you. Uh, and after that, I think that we will open the floor and, uh, and we, 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 will, uh, we can continue. But uh, I would ask for the very brief answers because we need to, to, uh, uh, to finish at 11 o'clock, as I know. Uh, uh, the, the first question addressed to uh, Justine uh, Korwek. Uh, uh, what do you think, uh, uh, what kind of conditions uh, uh, for this uh, shift paradigm are needed. You have mentioned uh, many advantages and also some barriers, but what kind of conditions should be, uh, 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 should be uh, 
uh, implemented when we want to achieve uh, uh, those uh, goals uh, focused on the uh, shift paradigm. Yes, um, so thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yeah, okay. Uh, well, I yeah. think, uh, first of all, since we are building on a regulatory framework, I think legal certainty for companies is very important. Um, so, you know, we do welcome all of the uh, EU-wide regulations, which aim to harmonize, you know, um, member states across uh, the different e-health e initiatives that they're embarking on. Um, but there is also a lot of questions with regard to national implementation, uh, as I mentioned, of the GDPR, for example. So any clarity on or, or you know, further kind of integration of efforts be between member states in terms of how to ensure privacy uh, on, a, on a harmonized um, way would definitely help us handle data and also ensure that we, whatever sensitive data we have, that we can actually you know, notify and be compliant across the different member states uh, on a harmonized basis. So that's number one. Um, in terms of interoperability, um, that's also a question of harmonization of standards. So when we talk about technical specifications and making digital health solutions work across Europe um, to encourage member states to really adhere to common standards um, is, is very important. And I know that that's what, um, you know, the European Commission has done with the uh, latest recommendation on the exchange of e-health records. But I think we need to go a little bit further in, in terms of um, in, in providing uh, recommendations to cover specifications for data um, and, and the use of medical uh, services and devices. So those are the two, the biggest kind of um, uh, outlying, um, I think, prerequisites for a really workable digital health scaling of across Europe. Thank you very much uh, for, for, uh, for this uh, explanation. And now I want to address the question to Enrique uh, uh, Martins, uh, you have mentioned the, the, some needs uh, addressed to the national level when we are talking about this uh, shift paradigm and also addressed to European level. Uh, uh, how could you describe it much more precisely? But on the other hand, uh, I'm very interested in, in, in uh, uh, your opinion and uh, 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 presentation of uh, 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 more details, if I can say, uh, uh, addressed to this uh, concept of, of digital patient, because I think it's it's very very important. You have also mentioned uh, uh, that uh, healthcare transformation requires uh, health aware citizens. So, uh, uh, on the one hand, national European, how it should be uh, uh, complemented, some activities in the way to uh, uh, digital health area uh, and uh, uh, the concept of uh, digital patient. Please. Thank you very much for your question. Uh, well, very quickly, I think, uh, I mean, it's just been mentioned that the GDPR, uh, when it then went down to national level implementation, it has created all differences in heterogeneity. I think that the way I see uh, digital health um, and, and, and digital healthcare systems is that we need to have an EU-wide and national-wide framework that basically is saying patients should have a digital right. It's not just an option, it is an obligation uh, that countries provide what I call baseline digital services. Um, and, and from this basis, um, we, then, we then move on to, to, to this idea of, of a digital patient. In this sense that um, if, even if a patient is old and, and perhaps not digital literate yet, we need to make sure they, they get there. So it's a little bit like um, universal health coverage. Um, I've used the term somewhere of digital uh, universal health coverage. It's basically saying we can't stop until every citizen is part of a digital 
seen as a digital, not necessarily patient, because he can be a citizen, not yet a patient. But I sometimes use the word patient because digital citizen is often used by e-government uh, documents. And it doesn't bring one dimension and to conclude that is very important and that uh, Fabrice, you mentioned, which is what is the purpose? What is the purpose of digital health? Uh, it is to make people healthier. Uh, it's not just to make systems more sustainable. Uh, if systems become more sustainable, the people are less healthy, um, then we're not on the right track. And this can happen because 20% of the population in Europe does not use the internet. Most of these are elderly people and are more sick than the ones that use it because they're either less socially well uh, or they're older. Um, so, I mean, to, this, is the, this is the baseline of the idea. And, and going back to, to Yelp Network and other efforts, the more we put people to talk with each other at national level, the more forums like this one engage uh, across stakeholders, the more people have to come on stage and promise that they will offer digital health. And then if we empower citizens to demand that promise, uh, we will get there faster than, than if we just wait until things happen. Because many times national projects stop because governments change. And another thing we see very rarely in Europe is cross-fertilization. Rarely go and get at governmental level expertise from other governments and, and other experts. And we see this in industry. Industry is permanently picking heads from each other and, and, and trying to learn from the best. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Henrique. And now uh, uh, I'm going to Daniela Scaramuccia. Uh, you have uh, uh, expressed uh, uh, the sol sol some solutions which are important for virtual diagnostic or continuous monitoring. Uh, uh, how important, from your point of view, from IBM point of view, those solutions are, and how we can combine uh, virtual diagnostic, continuous monitoring, uh, um, the focus on early warnings and so on, and, and prevention uh, using artificial intelligence and, uh, and algorithms. Thank you, Michael, Michael, for the question. Well, yes, uh, the, the, the IT system, the IT technology, um, can uh, combine it together, can provide support to the whole value chain and to the whole eco healthcare ecosystem, right? From research to telemonitoring. As you mentioned, well, in, nowadays the use of sensor, the use of mobile, the use of cloud uh, without big investment allow us to, uh, to collect data, understand how the patient is and monitor a patient remotely. And this is tr of tremendous importance always, but nowadays even more due to the social distance, right? And it will be become even more in the, in the next months while, I mean, we know that COVID remain an issue and a reality. Of course, the way we can connect the data, and some of my colleagues already mentioned before, the, the secondary right to use of data would allow uh, everybody to make research, to make population health prevention system, to collect the cohort of patients and analyze better the data, discover, uh, early, support the early diagnosis and provide uh, the policy maker to data and info to make uh, prevention. I mean, uh, I think that this is, uh, this is the way. I mean, it's not only uh, a, a state assistance, but you really also to, it's really to build a new way of providing healthcare to the whole value chain from research to assistance, more fact-based, more based on real world data. And as European, we have every day, we generate data, 741 million people generate data. We are all covered by, by uh, public security and public health, right? 
So we all generate tremendous amount of data that of course GDPR protect is secure from a cybersecurity point of view and from secondary use, yes, of course, everybody needs to be protected, but all this data can generate really tremendous value for, from the research, from the early diagnostic, from the new care development. And I do think that Europe is really uniquely positioned to build this new wave of delivering healthcare. Thank you, thank you, Daniela. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, and now we are going to Lorenzo Montremini. Uh, have you some examples of cross-border e-health solutions which could fulfill the requirements of uh, other European countries overcoming the information barriers you have talked about also in your presentation? Uh, uh, Lorenzo, please. Very brief, if I can ask. Okay, very quickly, uh, Dr. Martins has mentioned in his speech some types of cross-border health solutions. I can mention another one. As GP, we have uh, developed and started uh, 3C, that is one of the most uh, relevant electronic health record platform in Italy, in the province of uh, Trento, according to the most up-to-date uh, uh, electronic healthcare standards, IHE standards, a platform which is fully available in open reuse uh, procedure, procurement procedures and that may fulfill the requirements of other European countries overcoming uh, the, the information barriers we have talked about. Thank you very much for, for the precise uh, uh, response or the precise answer. Uh, uh, and uh, the last, uh, question addressed to Fabrizio Prior. Uh, you have described this uh, uh, solution, uh, uh, Canale and Amico, uh, and uh, we have discussed about, uh, uh, about the way from hospital to hospital. And uh, uh, also this is important uh, for patients, uh, for the families, uh, for the uh, uh, social climate and friendship during the processes of rehabilitation. But on the other hand, this is a very good example of cost reduction, how we can use new technologies, uh, uh, making uh, and improving uh, uh, services, but on the other hand, uh, making them uh, uh, um, um, must, um, much more uh, uh, focused on, uh, on efficiency, effectiveness, and, uh, and with the cost reduction. Uh, if uh, you and your company uh, uh, made some analysis. What is the comparison between uh, the process of hospitalization in, in a traditional way and this model with uh, uh, home hospitalization? Uh, here we are. So the, the request came directly from the, from the, uh, the care structures, okay? Because uh, one of the big problem is the economic issue. The second one is the number of patients that they, you have to treat. So the number in the facility are very limited and, uh, and also they are very expensive. And uh, treat uh, people at home in the early stage, it's very, very economic from uh, money point of view, but also from healthcare point of view, it's very uh, important because they uh, will uh, delay as much as possible the hospitalization of the people. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I think that uh, we have no time for further questions because we have one minute to the end of our uh, webinar. Uh, uh, I think that it was, thank you very much to all of you. It was fascinating, uh, uh, concrete uh, uh, solutions, uh, uh, precise descriptions on, uh, uh, of uh, uh, new models and new techniques and. Uh, new uh, solutions uh, uh, making the digital uh, health services uh, health, uh, health services uh, uh, real in the not in the future but but now uh, at current time and i think that we can agree that uh, a pandemic that uh, covid-19 uh, uh, did something uh, positive uh, of course with uh, with a so called positive 
uh, it means that uh, uh, it's uh, uh, changed our minds and uh, uh, that we are much more open uh, uh, for new uh, solutions uh, and that uh, we will think about digital health uh, uh, services uh, not as something which is uh, 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 far away from us but with very close and we can achieve some some solutions now and uh, and goals and as um, elizabeth said at the beginning at the beginning of our meeting uh, this is a game changer and uh, this is a time in which uh, uh, we can uh, uh, experience some kind of uh, uh, overcoming resili resilience resistance sorry to the new technologies uh, so this is the, the, the message from from uh, uh, from this uh, meeting we uh, i hope that uh, sme connect will continue this kind of topic because it would be great yes to have the, some sessions in the perspective of some month and, and now uh, i don't know uh, horst or elizabeth do you want to say at the end of the meeting at the at the wrap up at the summary can you hear me yes yeah yes oh, yes okay uh, I, I would like just uh, to thank all the panelists uh, for the inspiring uh, speeches. Uh, I'm sure uh, uh, that SMEs uh, will continue. Uh, I'm sure that uh, this webinar will be just the first of many, uh, many others to come because they, the subject represents uh, a relevant driver in the years to come. Uh, also from economic point of view. So there are many aspects uh, we can deepen. Uh, so uh, thank you and uh, see you soon. Thank you very much. See you soon and have a nice uh, day. Uh, uh, feel uh, uh, healthy and be healthy and stay healthy. Great, thank you very much. <laughs>